Prabhu, Dr. Rutul, Dr. Dhamin Panchal, and the entire team of uh, PSG for inviting me for this talk. First, I will give a brief introduction. GDM is considered a major global health problem because of its increasing prevalence and the well-known association between hyperglycemia in pregnancy and fetal maternal morbidity. Fetal outcomes correlate with maternal hyperglycemia severity, determining non not only perinatal and neonatal complications in the short term, but also long-term sequelae with increased risk of obesity and diabetes later in life. Therefore, it is mandatory to perform a timely diagnosis of GDM and to improve therapeutic strategies in order to achieve optimal glycemic control during pregnancy in the least amount of time. Now, the global prevalence is 9 to 25 percent, with India featuring around 16 percent. The influence factor, of, uh, the prevalence in India is 3.8 to 17.9 percent, and the factors which influence GDM is higher in literates, homemakers, people living in nuclear families, people belonging to middle class, residing in urban areas, primary gravida obese, and gestational week between 21 to 24 weeks. Now, you know very well that in during pregnancy, there is an increased insulin resistance and increased uh, hormones which elevate the blood sugars, which leads to beta cell hyperplasia, increased demand for insulin, which is met uh, during uh, normal uh, pregnancies. Uh, uh, and uh, the insulin secretion normalizes after pregnancy. However, in GDM patients, the beta cells fail to compensate and there is a rise in blood sugars. And after pregnancy, either a normal glycemia is in, uh, achieved or uh, there is a propensity for developing GDM in next pregnancy and for developing type 2 diabetes. The organs involved in pathophysiology of GDM are brain, adipose tissues, liver, gut, placenta, muscles, and they have interplay with pancreas, which lead to uh, beta cell dysfunction and hyperglycemia. Now, we have increased uh, inflammatory chemokines, increased uh, hormones, leading to increased gluconeogenesis uh, with the insulin resistance state and all of this basically predisposed to GDM. Uh, there is a increased uh, transport of glucose amino acid lipids uh, through the placenta to the fetal circulation and increased uh, hormones HPL and HPGF which contribute to hyperglycemia and fetus which leads to fetal pancreatic stimulation hyperinsulinemia. There is an increased gluconeogenesis, increased lipogenesis, excessive anabolism all of this uh, contribute to macrosomia in the fetus. Now, in pregnancy, there is some uh, uh, inflammatory response, uh, a normal immune response occurs in pregnancy. However, in G uh, GDM pathophysiology, there is an increased neutrophil or uh, activation. Neutrophil cell toxicity is more, monocyte activation is more. So, uh, there is a, uh, a, a more of inflammatory response, more of macrophage infiltration, a macrophage activation, more of insulin resistance, and all of this basically leads to uh, increased insulin resistance. Now, the risk factors are obesity, overweight, excessive gestational weight gain, westernized diet, ethnicity, genetic polymorphisms, other diseases of insulin resistance like PCOs, intrauterine environment, family, and personal history of GDM, advanced maternal age. All of these are risk factors. Now, if you see the vicious cycle of uh, uh, diabetes, it can only be prevented if we prevent obesity in the childbearing group, PCOs, and we prevent the preeclampsia in pregnancy. We control the hyperglycemia well in pregnancy and prevent obesity and uh, diabetes in the youth. Basically, all of this, uh, if done, we can uh, go a long way to prevent this complication. Now, GDM is a metabolic and reproductive disorder which causes type 2 diabetes hyperglycemia in pregnancy, preeclampsia, macrosemia, cesarean delivery, ovarian dysfunction, neonatal jaundice, maternal depression, breast cancer, and reproductive disorders. Now, the maternal complications in uh, GDM are as listed, hypoglycemia, DK, retinopathy, nephropathy, hypertension, diabetic gastropathy, preterm birth, premature rupture of membranes, development of type 2 diabetes. The fetal risk is breech presentation, neonatal hypoglycemia, jaundice, macrosomic baby respiratory distress syndrome. So, with this background, we come to the GDM phenotype and how we can uh, uh, act differently depending on the GDM phenotype of the pregnant GDM patient. Now, what is phenotype? Phenotype is defined as the complete observational characteristics of an organism or group including anatomic, physiological, 
biochemical and behavioral traits as determined by interaction of both genetic makeup and environmental factors. Now, if you see, there is a lot of uh, blame being put on genetics basically, but genes do not change very uh, fast. So, uh, uh, 50 years back, we had very low incidence of diabetes, GDM and all this. So, it is basically, uh, I think the onus is on the epigenetics, the environmental factors, the lifestyle, which is causing more of these chronic diseases and a very rapid increase in GDM, which needs to be addressed more and genes should not be blamed to that extent. Characteristics of gestational diabetes subtypes classified by oral GTT. So, we will come to different studies which have uh, studied the different phenotypes of the patients. Now, uh, in this study, GDM subtype classified as either fasting or post load hyperglycemia during diagnostic OGT at mid gestation showed distinct metabolic characteristics already at the beginning of pregnancy. Mothers with GDM and fasting hyperglycemia and especially those with elevated fasting and post load had an unfavorable metabolic phenotype with higher degree of insulin resistance and were more likely to receive glucose lowering medications. So, categorization based on abnormal GTT values provides a good and practical basis for clinical uh, risk stratification and future research. Characteristics and pregnancy outcomes across gestational diabetes mellitus based on insulin resistance. So, the key question was are different physiological GDM subtypes based on different degrees of insulin resistance associated with different phenotypic characteristics, adverse pregnancy outcomes and glucose intolerance postpartum. So, GDM with high insulin resistance represents a more adverse metabolic profile with greater degree of adverse pregnancy outcomes. So, those GDM patients which had higher insulin resistance had more adverse metabolic uh, uh, profiles and adverse pregnancy outcomes compared to those who were insulin sensitive or who had, uh, had did not have GDM basically. So, how might this impact on clinical practice and foreseeable future? A more accurate certification of GDM based on underlying physiological processes might help to better tailor management during pregnancy and long term follow up after delivery to prevent complications. Now, the impact of ethnicity on fetal and maternal outcomes of gestational diabetes, it is seen that certain ethnicities like South Asians had a worse glycemic control uh, at GDM diagnosis, lower gestational age at delivery and an increased risk of impaired fetal growth. So, as discussed in the previous lecture, Indians are more predisposed to it. So, given the implications of ethnicity, it is vital that those uh, ethnic groups which are at higher risk for GDM and its adverse outcomes should be focused more basically to prevent these complications. Now, pregnancy outcomes in the different phenotypes of gestational diabetes mellitus based on oral glucose tolerance test, its systemic review and meta-analysis. In this, they identified three phenotypes only with abnormal fasting glucose, those with abnormal post-load glucose and those with both abnormal fasting and post-load glucose and these uh, were associated with different maternal and fetal outcomes. So, there were total eight studies and total 20,928 20, patients of GDM and they uh, studied three uh, outcomes that is gestational age, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy and insulin treatment and they saw that those with abnormal fasting plasma glucose had highest prevalence of large for gestational age uh, babies and higher proportion needing insulin. Those with abnormal uh, post load glucose uh, had the lowest need for insulin treatment and highest uh, those with combined uh, deficiency of abnormal fasting and abnormal post prandial had highest prevalence of hypertensive disorders of pregnancy and higher proportion needing insulin. Maternal one hour post glucose glycemic peak is one of the best indicators of fetal macrosemia, but fasting uh, glucose levels also significantly influence perinatal and neutral outcomes. Now, there was another study where they studied mid gestational cardiovascular phenotypes in patients who developed gestational diabetes and hypertensive uh, disorders of pregnancy. So, three groups those who had both uh, gestational diabetes uh, and hypertensive disorder of pregnancy and uh, normal uh, uh, gest gestation. All of these were studied and they showed conclusively that those who develop hypertensive disorders of pregnancy or GDM have a mild subclinical reduction in left ventricular function. In patients who have hypertensive disorder of pregnancy, 
there is evidence of impaired placental and all biomarkers of impedance to peripheral flu uh, blood flow uh, in patients of hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. However, in GDM patients, uh, there may be some uh, uh, abnormalities related to impedance of uh, 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 peripheral blood flow, but they are not as pronounced as patients who have HDP. Now, uh, th this is another study where they studied metabolic phenotypes of early gestational diabetes mellitus and their association with ad adverse uh, pregnancy, pregnancy outcomes. And early gestational diabetes mellitus was predominantly related to an above median insulin resistance uh, level alone, which increased the risk of having larger babies and off season section. Women with below median uh, secretion alone as well as with both impairments had a similar pregnancy outcome. So those who had above median insulin resistance, they were basically having more adverse uh, outcomes as far as the babies are concerned basically. Prevalence of preeclampsia and uterine artery resistance in the different phenotypes of gestational diabetes mellitus. So total 6, 9, 2, 8 pregnant women uh, were studied, 5, 2, 7, 4 without GDM and 1654 with GDM. And they classified these ladies as those with uh, uh, only the fasting glucose sugars abnormal, those with post prandial sugars abnormal, and those with combined deficiencies. So uh, it was seen that uh, the prevalence of preeclampsia was uh, maximum in those who had combined deficiency, uh, both the abn uh, abnormal fasting and post load glucose values. Now, prevalence of uh, uh, so basically the combined abnormal phenotype presents with the highest rate of preeclampsia and more most distinct pattern of uterine arterial resistance. So, if you, the lady has both the abnormalities, you have to be more aggressive on the treatment part. Now, th this was paper where weight gain after diagnosis of GDM and its association with adverse pregnancy outcomes was studied, and they concluded that if once the GDM is um, diagnosed, you have to restrict gestational weight gain after diagnosis to have a better and more favorable prognosis in these patients. By restricting the weight gain, you will be able to prevent uh, or decrease the incidence of PIH, preeclampsia, LGA, macrosomia, and birth by cesarean section. Now, coming to GDM phenotypes and future complications, subtypes of gestational diabetes and future risk of pre-diabetes or diabetes. And in this study, they evaluated six, one, three patients, one with predominantly sens sensitivity defect, second was a predominantly insulin secretion defect, and th the third group was non-GDM de defect. And they uh, uh, inferred that antipartum findings, they uh, uh, followed these patients at three months, six months uh, postpartum, and they uh, found that antipartum findings persisted after uh, pregnancy uh, with lower insulin sensitivity as well as with insul lower insulin secretion, both of these. Beta cell compensation was low, uh, also lower in both GDM subtypes and both subtypes exhibited higher post-challenge glycemia on GTT at 3 months and 12 months than non-GDM subjects. So prevalence of pre-diabetes and diabetes was higher in both these subtypes uh, and GDM, uh, uh, both these subtypes of GDM sensitivity and GDM secretion compared to non-GDM. So both of these subtypes have a equally unfavorable prognosis. So beta cell dysfunction, glycemia and antecedent pre-diabetes, diabetes do not vary between GDM subtypes in the first year post postpartum. Now this study evaluated the prevalence of metabolic syndrome in women after maternal complications of pregnancy and it was observed that women with a prior history of one of the uh, common major pregnancy complications are at high risk of future cardiovascular and metabolic disease. Follow up within one year postpartum is an appropriate time to commence preventive strategies in these uh, subgroup patients. Now coming to the treatment part with the phenotypes of uh, GDM. Now predictors of uh, pharmacology treatment, especially the insulin treatment, was early diagnosis of GDM, older maternal age, BMI more than 30, previous GDM, family history of diabetes, HbA1c at diagnosis more than 5.5, and elevated 1 and 2 hour post glucose level at OGTT. Now this was a paper published in Frontiers Endocrinology, different gestational diabetes phenotypes with insulin regimen fits better. And goal of this study was to identify different maternal phenotypes in order to plan, since the diagnosis of GDM, the appropriate treatment strategy. 
uh, and you know the insulin is one of the key strategies in managing diabetes in pregnancy. Choosing the best strategy th uh, in terms of type and timing of insulin therapy is essential to improve the glycemic control in pregnancy. And they found that patients who had abnormal fasting glucose, BMI more than 30, age more than 30, 35, family history of diabetes, assistant reproduction technology being used, previous GDM, hypothyroidism, all of these basically had a higher requirement of insulin. So insulin was a generally uh, used in these patients. They also studied that altered 1 and 2 hour plasma glucose levels at OGDT, age more than 35 and previous GDM were found as independent predicting factors for the use of combined therapy that is basal bolus therapy. Pre-pregnancy BMI of less than 30 and normal fasting plasma glucose values at OGDT was found to have be significantly associated with the use of rapid insulin analogs only. Higher induction of labor was found in women treated with insulin, especially if combined with if they were on basal bolus therapy. Now, future research is in metabolics. It is seen that by the time we diagnose uh, GDM uh, by the conventional method, uh, we are uh, beyond 20-24 weeks. But by with metabolics, we can uh, have some markers where we can know that this lady is uh, going to develop GDM at. Uh, 14 to 16 weeks only basically and a lot of research is being focused to this area because if you are able to predict that this lady is going to develop GDFs, you can be more aggressive in uh, therapy in these patients. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the preconception you have to uh, focus on preconception counseling, optimization of risk factors, maternal nutrition and to reduce maternal obesity and in the first trimester you can identify pre-existing diabetes or Modi early decision of GDM by metabolics and novel biac markers for future uh, GDM and a major study is going at and NIMHANS basically and they may come up with some good biomarker to diagnose GDM in the 16th week basically. Subsequently, we uh, go for the phenotyping of GDM and act accordingly. So understanding gestational hyperglycemia, you have metabolomics and proteomics. There is a high throughout platforms will help to reveal the metabolic, proteomic, genetic architecture of gestational hyper hyperglycemia and the idea is to detect these early basically. Uh, microbiome is also because uh, this biopsis of the microbiome also results in uh, adverse uh, uh, outcomes and more GDM and if we identify these microbiomes, we may basically uh, 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 replace this with beneficial microbiomes. Transcriptomics and epigen wide association studies are also underway to uh, detect GDM and to improve the prognosis in GDM. Now, uh, so con to conclude, disc glycemia among women with gestational diabetes mellitus is associated with adverse maternal neonatal outcomes. Effective management of GDM involves careful monitoring of blood glucose levels, dietary modifications, and in some cases, insulin therapy. By tailoring interventions based on the specific GDM phenotype, healthcare providers can optimize maternal glucose control and potentially mitigate the associated risk to improve pregnancy outcomes. Understanding the diverse phenotype of GDM is crucial for comprehensive prenatal care. Thank you.